What's up guys? Golden hour right here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys what I do to clean up the intake manifold or well, like pretty much just to like delete stuff that we don't need. Like some of the vacuum lines inside there. So less room for vacuum leaks that could potentially give you boost leaks. If you all are boosted. So it's pretty much comparison. There's like not much going on in here. I mean there's still stuff that's going on but not as much compared to like if it was stock. So let's take a look at the other manifold of the motor that I'm about to put in. Here we are. It's been a minute since I seen you. I've been kind of slacking guys. You know the usual work. But you know, sometimes in life, you just gotta make time. Can't really see it from this angle, so let me go ahead and pull out this whole dolly with the motor sitting on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this manifold. It's pretty much like 12 millimeter nuts and bolts, like all around. If I'm not mistaken, from the top of my head, I believe there's 10. Like there's some in between. Uh, like right there too so an extension and a swivel would be helpful for this which is what I'm gonna go grab right now got him so that's one So the bolts right on the bottom part of this intake manifold is where the swivel comes in handy. So if you guys don't have a swivel, I suggest using one for these kind of things. I'm going to use the swivel with the short socket, shallow socket. So that's how pretty much the swivel works. You can see it right there. Got that bolt out. So I got the second to the last bolt out with the ratchet right here. And I was wrong guys, the ratchet and socket is kind of still too big for this little space right here. So depending on your ratchet and socket combo, it may or may not fit in there. So in my case, I'd have to use a wrench to take it off. I feel like getting loose. all of the bolts out all 10 of them so I just oh so I'm gonna slide this off but before I forget there's like a few um, water lines that's connected from the block to the manifold which we'll have to disconnect as well I don't even think there's a clamp on the other manifold I mean the other part. Oh lucky I never just put this motor in the car, huh? So this hose was for the water line, the cooling hose, and this was for the 
I think it's called an IACV IACV vacuum stuff so let's go ahead back into the garage and remove, remove the intake manifold off of the other motor process is pretty much the same thing the 10 bolts but before I take off the manifold off of this motor I need to take off the fuel rail for the other motor that was at on the side the fuel rail was already off so I didn't need to do that and this one I actually have to loosen these because they're actually bolted down so the fuel rail was pretty much those two top bolts one here the second one here and the last one right there So people sometimes actually take off the whole nipple and either like re-thread it or fill it with JB Weld or Weld it. I'm not too sure how the how good the JB Weld would hold up but I just did this. But I may consider doing that in the future for like a more of a no leak guarantee kind of deal. Cause at the same time like these rubber um, vacuum caps could end up like breaking kind of same way these holes these hoses would do as they get older so that's one thing to do one thing that you could delete off of your intake manifold to clean it up a little bit and another thing is like these lines right here you could remove it and take it off I didn't like fully take this off because I was still kind of using like this part pretty sure this is a coolant coolant passage to go to your throttle body So this is your throttle body right here and this is the coolant line which comes from this water neck at the back of the manifold so you could pretty much um, take off this whole part and just run a straight hose from here to here too bad I don't have a manifold that looks like what it was before so you guys could see what I deleted because I actually cut off these lines and you know just closed it because we don't use this we're not going to be using these anymore I cut it off I pretty much cut it over here at this end too because we don't use that we don't need it and I think this part right here because this manifold didn't have it and I didn't really have any problems, so I can maybe take it off. But don't hold me to it, guys. You can if you want to. I mean, I wasn't running one. But if something happens to your car, don't blame me. Well, nothing happened to my car. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, well, from this part thing wise you know what I think I actually have a stock manifold in my storage let me go check so I found another stock manifold in my storage but this one pretty much to the previous owners cut off these parts because you don't need them so if these lines on your intake manifold on your guys cars isn't cut just caught them because you don't need it if you want to 
but that way at least less yeah you you'll have less stuff going on going on around in your engine bay if you guys are trying to wire tuck your motors damn check this out so I guess these stock manifolds came with this elbow piece from here to here but look at this got a whole contraption going on here I like it fancy <laughs> just kidding no you can't do that kind of stuff over here just kidding whatever works works it's up to you guys I'm gonna use my stock fuel rail instead of this fuel rail right here I'm not too sure forget what he said that fuel rail was if you guys know because I guess this is like a special fuel rail if I'm not mistaken but I'll just use my stock fuel rail because I'm gonna be using the injectors the same injectors that was running with this motor pretty much the whole same setup with the T25 turbo and that manifold as well so that's one thing to get out of the way and pretty much transfer all of my coolant lines <laughs> look familiar yeah whatever works works so the reason behind this is I'm using steel braided lines for the coolant running through my turbo and the uh, fittings I could only find I forget what size this is but I could only find a uh, this size fitting well that was closest to this size because the nipple on the block is bigger than the fittings that I could find for these so this is pretty much a reducer coupling to reduce the block size fitting to this AN fitting right here. But yeah, pretty much I have to transfer over the coolant lines, this whole manifold right here. And I am also taking the AC compressor. I bought that AC compressor brand new. And I haven't even used it yet because all the times I was trying to run this car it kept breaking down on me. But hopefully everything is about to change. But I just want to make sure the car is running right first before I do charge the AC because it'd be a waste of Freon to put the motor in the car and fill it up with Freon and have AC for a little bit and then something happens and then I'll end up having to pull the motor again so I just want to make sure that it's running right before I get to the special necessities of like having AC and stuff I'm actually planning to remove the whole nipple inside this manifold and tap the hole with a M8 ta M8 by 1.25 tap because that's the size of the hole in here and just fill that hole with these bolts after I thread it with maybe Teflon so it will for sure won't leak because on my other manifold how I was running it with these vacuum caps I noticed if you guys can tell if you look closely there's small cracks already forming on them and it'll be such a waste to finally like properly take care of it instead of you know just capping it with the rubber vacuum caps while it's out of the motor where I, where I can easily access it and already do it 
compared to you know doing this and throwing the motor back inside the car and later on down the line these give out and I have to pull the intake manifold back out because doing that with the motor inside of the car is like kind of kind of it's doable but kind of hard so I might as well do it right now so pretty much to start it off take off the two 10 millimeter bolts over here then unclip these guys right here and after we do that just pull it off kind of this one too over here you can already see that part cracking so I left if I left it the way it was then same thing would have had a leak or you can just do this don't need that anymore then just slide off the clips and just pop these guys off so once you guys got all the little hoses off it'll look like this and after you guys pop it off it'll look like this I popped one off already this guy right here So to pop it off, the way I did it was I used a bolt slightly smaller than the hole. Just pop it in. Grab your hammer. Give it a whack. And there it is. So we're going to do that to all four holes. After you get all the nipples out, you grab your tap the 8 by 1.25 tap and then start tapping away you can see all the metal shavings falling off and it's pretty much out the other end Pretty much, this is what you have to do for all the four holes. So I'm just gonna grab any short 8x1.25 bolt from my stash over here and wrap it in Teflon first before I thread it in. So let's see if it threads in fine. Looks good so far. There it is. Way better. Way better than this. Huh. So I'm just gonna put Teflon before I thread it in just to ensure that it still doesn't leak out through the threads. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tap the rest of the three holes left and I'll get back to you guys. So I got three of the bolts on, in, and the last one, I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. So we have your bolt, our bolt right here. And there's, this is a Teflon. So there's a correct way to put this on the threads. You need to put it in a certain direction of which way the thread 
threads in to the part. Oops. So pretty much the bolt threads in in a clockwise direction. So you need to wrap the threads with the Teflon in a clockwise direction. Because if you go counterclockwise, let me show you guys what would happen. If you go counterclockwise and you screw it in clockwise, it would end up catching the threads like that. You see? And the Teflon would end up coming out while you're trying to screw it in. See this right here? If you go clockwise, see how it's coming out? That's why we have to go clockwise. So I would say do about like two, two to three rounds around the threads. Be sure to try and do your best to make it kind of tight. There we go. So after we're done with that, thread it in. And there we go guys. So in conclusion, the whole purpose of like deleting lines off of the intake manifold isn't really for like any horsepower gains or like power gains, but it does help eliminate possibilities of having vacuum leaks. But like I said in the beginning of this video, it'll help you delete possibilities of having vacuum leaks which could lead to boost leaks if you guys are boosted. And boost leaks do mess you up. So, yeah. And if I'm missing anything else and if there's more things that you could actually delete, then let me know down in the comments below. And if there's something that I deleted that you actually really need to keep, then same thing let me know so I don't break my car again I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it sort of helped some of you guys out there with 240s and who's looking to clean up their engine bay a little bit if you guys have any other questions then you can let me know down in the comments below and if you guys haven't done so yet please subscribe to this YouTube channel Got more things I plan to do with this car and with the truck that's behind this car. For those of you guys who don't know or who are new to the channel. But yeah guys, thanks for watching. Smash that like button and I'll see you guys next time.